Okay, I'm here at home right now. I don't have my pen tool, so I'm going to go ahead and just speak through the solutions to these. So if you scroll down to the bottom, you should see the typewritten solutions. So my suggestion is to try the problem, keep trying it different ways until you get that answer. Now I'm just going to go through and talk you through it in case you need some help. So for this per first problem, they want you to write and balance the reaction. So you're simply going to take that HF, and that HF is going to be added to KOH, and it's going to produce potassium fluoride, KF, with water. So it's an acid-base neutralization that just forms water. Now, this is a strong acid, or a weak acid, with a strong base. So we're going to get a pH greater than 7 at equivalence. In this case, you're simply going to do MAVA equals MBVB. Okay? They want what volume of VB. Okay? So here is VA. MA, you're going to multiply those together and then divide it by 0.2 to get your answer. Here they want the pH of hydrofluoric acid. You know that you're going to use the equation pH equals negative log of H plus, and in this case the H plus is the square root of Ka times the initial concentration of the acid. So here is the initial concentration of the acid, that's 0.5. You're going to multiply that by Ka, which is 6.24. You're going to take the square root of that. That's H+. Plus. And then to get the pH, you're simply going to take the negative log of that answer. Okay, let's look at titration curves. Okay, First off, it tells us that it shows the titration of an unknown acid against sodium hydroxide. We can look at this and tell right away that it is a weak acid versus strong base titration. We know weak acid because we're starting at an acidic pH, but it does buffer here, and if you can't really tell that that's a buffer, there's our equivalence point. It's slightly greater than 7. So it wants to know, um, the graph shows a curve um, based on the graph, the pKa. So that's really easy. The pKa is simply the pH when it's buffered. So this is the buffer zone right here, and the pH when it's buffered is 4, so the answer is B. The equivalence point, okay, so we find the largest vertical region, and halfway through that, looks like it's 8, that's where the indicator will change color, the answer is D, 8, which of the following is a possibility of the unknown acid? So we know that this is a weak acid titration, and the only weak acid on this list is HNO2, remember the strong acids are HCl, HBr, HI, so there's BR, HNO3, HClO3, HClO4, H2SO4. Okay, these problems are really cool. The point where the moles of the strong base, the titrant, are equal to the moles of the weak acid. That's exactly when you've neutralized it. They've equaled each other. Okay, and that's the equivalence point there, C. Um, for this next part, the point at which the pH is closest to that of the strong base so that's going to be E, the highest pH is going to be the closest to the pH of the strong base. Remember, bases have high pH. The point at which the concentration of the weak acid and conjugate base are approximately equal. Now, that's the definition of a buffer. They're equal because we have enough base to neutralize any excess acid in the stomach and enough acid to neutralize any base in the stomach. And there's the, uh, the buffer zone. We can tell that the pKa is probably around 5.5 there. The point at which the concentration of the weak acid is larger, so that's acidotic situation, that's A. Okay, let's look at this curve. It says we have the titration of 25 mils of a weak acid um, with 25 mils of 0.1 molar NaOH. So two features that tell us that HA is a weak acid. Well, one, the equivalence point here is greater than 7. And two, after a slight increase and in starting at a fairly high for acidic pH, it buffers out here. So we have the presence of a buffer zone and we have the presence of an equivalence point greater than 7. Um, determine the acid dissociation constant Ka. So a lot of people get thrown off on a question like this. Um, so let's take a look. I don't mean to do that. Okay. So uh, you can get the pKa because that's simply the buffer zone. So that's 10 times, 1 times 10 to the minus 5th. Oh, I'm sorry. 
the pKa is, in this case, 5. pKa is 5. So uh, the Ka is 10 to the minus pKa, so 1 times 10 to the minus 5th. Um, if you were going to do this with HCl, that's a strong acid. So it'd start earlier and stay flat and then rise and then go flat again. And the midway between that risen region should be 7. Uh, but you're going to hit equivalents at the same volume. The curve is just going to be different. So no buffer zone, pH of 7 and equivalents. Um, if the concentration of NaOH was changed, 0.22, what volume? So in this case, you're simply going to go ahead and, and multiply VA, which is 25, times MA, which is 0.1. And in this case, you're simply going to divide it by 0.22 to get the answer. And what would the concentration of H plus be? So we know that H plus for a weak acid is simply the square root of the Ka, 1 times 10 to the minus 5th, um, times the concentration of the acid, and they told us that that's 0.1. So that's going to give you H plus. If you take the negative log of that, you're going to have pH. Um, and actually, they're saying that it was changed to 0.2. So the square root of 0.2 times 1 times 10 to the minus 5th is H plus. The negative log of that is pH, and 14 minus that is pOH. So buffer systems here, let's talk about it. Um, which of the following combinations would be most resistant to a change in pH? If exposed to a concentrated, my spelling is so bad, sulfuric acid. Okay, so resistant to pH means a buffer. In order to have a buffer zone, you need to be a weak acid. And at the buffer zone, the concentration of the weak acid is equal to the conjugate base. So when you're looking at these problems, ignore this Na here. So this is sodium hydroxide with NaCl. And this is hydrochloric acid, HCl, with its conjugate base, Cl-. minus. But HCl is strong, so it won't buffer. This is HBr with its conjugate base, S-. minus, But HBr is strong, so you'll have no buffer zone. Um, this is HF with its conjugate base F minus. Ignore that Na. Remember. Um, and that is a weak acid, so will buffer. And their concentrations are equal. The amount of them are equal. You have 25 mils of 0.1 and 25 mils of 0.1. So then it's just D. Here, um, the kidneys help control um, the pH of blood via this carbonic acid equilibrium. So the relationship between those two, uh, a normal blood pH, that's when this equilibrium is acting as a strong buffer. Um, the concentrations are going to be exactly the same. When the concentration of the acid equals the concentration of the conjugate base, the system's buffered. We got enough conjugate base to suck up any drop in pH, and we got enough acid to deal with any increase in pH. Okay. Um, in an acidotic situation, we don't have enough base to soak up that acid. So in that situation, the concentration of the acid is higher than the concentration of the conjugate base. pH is lower than pKa in that case. And alkalotic will be uh, the opposite. The concentration of the base would actually be greater. Um, so there is actually too much base present. Um, both bad situations. And D, awareness of uh, weak acid pKa, I'm going to go through and just read this because I probably messed it up, is central to understanding gastric biochemistry and treating disease. True story. Um, we want to know how strong those acids are. We want to know how much they give up hydrogen. Because we're going to need to know that information um, about each drug you put in your body because if your kidneys, and, and this is why drugs can be really hard on your kidneys, your kidneys or any other part of your body that is responsible for controlling pH is doing that because it understands the Ka or the pKa of each um, acid. Okay, So we want to describe an experiment um, you could perform to determine the pKa of the carbonic acid system shown in the reaction above. Be specific and indicate all equipment you would need. Okay, so we've got this new drug that's delivered and we want to know its pKa because we want to know how the body's uh, carbonic acid situation is going to react to it. So um, let's go ahead and understand the pKa of carbonic acid. Simply set up a titration. All you got to do is titrate it against strong base. It's a weak acid, so you're going to get a buffer zone. And the pKa at the buffer zone 
um, or the pH at the buffer zone is the pKa. And that's it. That's the answer. You could take 10 to the minus pKa and get the Ka if you'd like.